Welcome to episode 35 of the Danso Pitch Podcast. I am your host, Charles Danso, joined by my co-host, Mr. Rami. Please introduce yourself. What's up, everybody? Rami Ibrahim here, as you know, from the Danso team, always excited. And we've been doing this podcast since day one, you know, so I'm back. I'm ready to do another great episode with my man, Charles. Yeah, I'm super excited to discuss this topic, this episode, um, especially coming off the Super Bowl. Um, as you guys have been watching the Super Bowl with Tom Brady, um, you know, him basically doing it again, uh, the winning goal. ring seven. Yeah, the GOAT. Uh, people thought that he couldn't do it, but he made it work. He, w- he was surrounded by a tremendous amount of talent, but a lot of people don't really see what goes into that. It's having the right salary cap in place. But we'll discuss more in that. We'll also discuss how salary caps can affect you if you work in politics and the government, as well as some business, some businesses offer it as well. But we'll discuss more as we kind of go through this episode. So let's start off right away, Rami, if you can please just kind of detail what a salary cap may be for the audience. Yep, absolutely. So a salary cap, also known as a wage cap, is, you know, a written out specific legally stated um, stature that states for a business how much their employees can earn as a total. Basically, like there's a cap on the total amount of salaries that you could be paying your employees. So it's not only a cap on on individuals making their money, but it's also overall on the company bottom line total, how much they're paying out. Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, and I first want to touch base is kind of discussing sports. Obviously, there's three uh, major professional sports in the United States that are salary capped, which is obviously the National Football League, uh, the National Basketball Association and Major League Baseball, which all three are different. And we'll kind of just briefly go through why each is different. But overall, what it basically means is this amount of of money is given to this amount of team and you can't exceed that salary cap. And if you can't exceed that salary cap, you have to face a penalty as a result. Um, Usually, example, like with the National Football League, uh, they'll usually say like a team is at a salary cap. So basically... Um, when they say like dead cap, that means it's basically something that's that's against the league. That's money that the owner, whoever the owner is of that team, will have to pay out. An example being, uh, I believe Carson Wentz, um, when they're saying like they're trying to trade him to Philadelphia Eagles with that huge contract that he has. I don't have the exact figure on me, but um, that basically would go against the Philadelphia Eagles organization. And as a result of them paying him so much money, and, and the fact that his contract isn't up and the fact that he's guaranteed a certain amount for the remainder of his contract, the owner would actually have to pay out of his pocket, which is Jeffrey Lurie, to basically trade Carson Wentz. So that's one of the, um, I guess, the advantages, disadvantages, how we want to look at of a salary cap, Rami. Yeah, and when you when I hear salary caps, most people would automatically think of sports. It's just the most relevant way that people see it used. Um, Mm -hmm. so what Charles just described is, you know, when a player, a player signs a contract for X amount of years in sports and, you know, they get a a total salary, but then how they get paid that salary could fluctuate over the years. But essentially Mm -hmm. when a player gets traded or moves teams like that new team has to assume that player's contract. You know, just because he's being traded doesn't mean he's not going to get paid the same amount he signed for. So that's like in sports, it's so major to consider because a team has to consider their salary cap, how much they're spending on their players. For example, a highly a high contract like Carson Wentz in the 30 million is going to take a large chunk of their salary cap. They might not most teams might not be able to afford that and still have a good team to pay the rest of their you know, their players. So it's very important in sports because every decision is always weighed against a team salary cap. Can I afford this player? Yeah. And um, another thing too is obviously with the salary cap um, for the audience, each player is actually paid different. A lot of people may not know that. Um, the Like example, for the, for the National Football League, usually quarterbacks will make uh, a lot more money compared to other skill positions. 
like a wide receiver or a running back or whatever the case Absolutely. is. Or if you're or if you're the superstar player. It's like um, a different tier altogether. Correct. Uh same applies to basketball. Um if you're a point forward like a LeBron James, James Harden, Giannis Antetokounmpo, um you would basically make a lot more money than some of your other counterparts. So that basically would be um however um much money that obviously you're allotted per organization um in terms of you know to kind of play around with that money that's why you usually see a lot of players superstar players make so much more compared to somebody that could be like a bench player or like just a rotational <clears throat> player um I mean, that's kind of the effects of that yeah you get what you pay yeah, for you know you get what you pay right. for like a player's contract is always pretty much dependent on their quality of play you know a team is paying for what they get so they're you know there's essentially these contracts that give these players like a price tag when a when a team needs to make decisions teams are always shuffling around you know they have to consider not just if you want the biggest baddest player the rest of your team is not going to be able to eat as much because that player is eating up so much of your contract so it's really you know what's the benefit of a team what's the benefit of salary caps that you're hearing here charles like i mean the benefit for salary caps is it it doesn't allow a team to basically take every single best player mm -hmm. and then put it all in one. There's a restriction on how much you can allocate to each amount of players. That's why usually if you do have a certain situation where you do have superstars on one team, usually here there's either a case of one is going to have to take a pay cut or you're going to have to sacrifice basically your future, which your bench which could players be draft too. Picks. Yeah, your bench players should draft picks. Like example with basketball, obviously you guys heard about the James Harden trade. And so that's why I usually see, you saw a lot of key bench players getting moved as well as them giving up their future draft picks because giving up future draft picks means the money that you have to basically pay out on a rookie deal uh, for the years ahead, you would actually go to that player that you traded for. So that's why usually when you hear about big time players getting traded, they give up draft picks because those draft picks is basically money um, depending on how much you're getting paid for that salary year will basically go to that major player. So, and I think the NFL right now is at 198 million of the hard cap. So basically, um, I'm going to give two tiers, uh, Rami for the audience of what, uh, a salary cap could be in sports. So do you have a hard cap? Uh, usually the NFL and the NHL follow this. So a hard cap is basically how much. Uh, the NFL league, as well as the NHL, National Hockey League, is allotted for that year. So right now, uh, for the 2021 year, uh, the NFL is at 198 million, and and the National Hockey League is around 81 million. So this is how much each team is allotted to basically um, distribute amongst their players. So that after you basically went went to that 198 mark or the 81 mark, respectfully for each. For, um, sports uh, league, you can't go over that cap. The beautiful thing about basketball is they have a soft cap. So in the National Basketball Association, the M the NBA actually allows their owners to go over the, the basically the salary cap they're allotted for that year. The only issue is you will have to pay as an owner a tax on that. So usually, I don't know if you guys, the audience tuning in, Rami, if you tune in, usually when they say that, oh, uh, Mark Cuban example went over the luxury tax. So basically that means that off of that, yeah, off of that money that each owner is allowed, each franchise allowed it, that owner basically went over. So that means that uh, they have to pay a tax to the actual National Basketball Association out of their own pocket, but they can go and, and, and exceed that um, as much as they want. But each time that you exceed the luxury tax in basketball, you have to pay additional fee. That's why usually, obviously owners don't, they're not too keen on that. NBA owners aren't too keen on it. That's why you really hear about that. Unless like, you may be like a LeBron James tier or something where they're like, you know what? I could just make that back in ticket sales or something. But usually like 90% of the time, you're not gonna get an owner doing that because again, that's money that he or she will have to pay out of their pocket. And, I've, and, and the rich stay rich for a reason. They're not trying to pay more than they need to, so. That's yeah. just something to think. Uh, it's like, how bad do you want it? You know, <laughs> right. some people yeah. go all out for the championship sometimes. But right. um, 
yeah, I guess it the the main benefit of a salary cap and the reason it's so discussed in basketball and football and all the major sports, sorry, I should say, is because mm-hmm. it's really what keeps balance in the league. It it Correct. it stops any one team from becoming super powerful and just taking over. It promotes equity among the league. So yeah. It will always be a thing. Otherwise, the scales will just be imbalanced, as you've seen. And some of these superstar teams, they can get together, but they won't be able to last too long because everybody's going to want to get theirs. You know, nobody's at the end of the day, people are going to want their money when it comes to these athletes. I yeah, think you got to You got a mortgage to pay. You got to keep up with the with the, uh, you know, the cars and all that. So obviously they could get you injured. Get, they could get injured at any injured, time and stop yeah. making money. So they need to rack it up while they can. Correct. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's that's from a sports um, aspect. But I kind of want to transition a little bit into the government. Um, a lot of people may not know, but the government actually has a salary cap as well. So what are government um, uh, salary caps? This basically could mean how much uh, maybe a, a certain cabinet member, a, a certain uh, a senator, even the president is allowed to be paid for that for that fiscal year or that term that they're in office or they're serving. That's why a lot of people may not know. That's why usually when uh, they say like the government does a government shutdown or they're basically reviewing the, the, the budget deficit for the year, that also includes in government how much that that uh, cabinet or, or or again, worker is getting paid. It even goes as high as the president, how much he's getting paid for that year. And as well, as, well now I can say she, vice president as well. So with that, the salary cap, again, it goes by rank. It goes by uh, tenure as well, how long you've been uh, in office, so to speak. And also in terms of what are your cabinet members? Because again, uh, in terms of the more the more people that you have uh, that work with you, the more money that has to be given out. So usually when the government goes into a shutdown, that also affects the pay. So, you know, that could be a discussion amongst how much this person is getting paid versus this person how much they have to give out, how much they're not getting paid. So that's why usually with that shutdown, when usually they, the, the few years that they've gone to shut down the government, it's been so catastrophic for them because that also affects their pay. A lot of people don't get paid. as That even it means people in the White House as well. Rami, your thoughts on that? Yeah, and in terms of government, <clears throat> salary caps are very important. I, I mean, you know, it's all about merit, clearance, how what position you hold, but... It's I think it's crucial to note that without a salary cap, you know, politicians can become very powerful. So a salary cap definitely, you know, outlines the cap of what they can make so that they can follow their duties of serving their constituents without being on a money grab during their run, which could happen without a cap. Um, Yeah, I mean. You know, like, uh, well, thank God they had a cap around Trump time because that shit would have been fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I mean, to 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 kind of just sum that up from that aspect, you know, um, again, it, it, it's a way to kind of promote equity, a kind of a balance of power. So I think that's something just to kind of know for the audience, um, you know, just having that in place allows each person to kind of get the fair share. Well, try to do it as fair as possible, so to speak. Well, but I'm um, transitioning. Yeah, go and ahead. The last thing I'll say is since, I mean, obviously, since it's based on merit and position and all these things, although there is a cap, obviously, they do have a set salary that is fair and equitable. So, you know, this is not to say they're making less. They're just getting paid the fair amount and they can't exceed a certain amount in the future. So it's fair to note that that's why government positions pay so well. Well, most some, of, I think. Most yeah, of them, no, most, don't. Yeah. I think okay. I think most. I, I wouldn't go too far to say, oh, I, I'm not I talking think about so. like working at the DMV or anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you if you're in DC or 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 you know towards those areas, yeah, I'm sure the the pay is a little bit better. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So <laughs> just to kind of um, yeah, piggyback um, the 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 other piece of a salary cap. Sometimes you see this, but it's rare. Is actually in business and corporations. Uh, usually, uh, if you if you're at a C level, which is uh, for those on the call to know what a C level is, that's basically like a corporate executive. Um, usually, they may be salary capped, but usually they don't um, only because the fact that you have to incorporate bonuses and sometimes, obviously, a C level, a, a corporate, 
CEO, a, 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 a director, you probably will be making six figures plus. So it's kind of hard to put a salary cap on that, especially, like I said, adding in the bonuses and stuff. But some businesses may do that. Uh, you may see maybe like a startup business having a salary cap. Uh, some tech firm do salary caps. It's rare, but some of them do it. Um, because again, it's it's kind of given a, a, a fair share, um, especially if you're on a budget uh, within your, your business or whatever business that you're working for. Uh, they may do a salary cap just to kind of have the fair distribution pay around amongst their workers but again it's rare that you would see that um a few people still do it but rarely you see that in business yeah and i feel like it's a sharp contrast contrast from the government side to the business side when, when when i when i feel like the two one is central government the other is free market you know so people tend to you know if you're working in government positions you know what you're getting, you know you're getting paid a fair amount and you have a cap in the future. People often leave government jobs to go to, you know, private private firms where they mm -hmm. will most likely not have a salary cap. That's why, yeah. you know, this tends to happen is like people leave their professions after a long career in government and then they mm -hmm. can start their own businesses where they won't have cap and use their expertise to get, you know, more potential earnings so this is to say business you're way less likely to find hard caps on what you could make in the future especially in like sales fields where incentives and commissions are so key yeah and um uh, yeah i mean just to kind of piggyback off of that also i would advise for the audience if you're looking for a new job if you go on an interview, you should ask these questions. Um, sometimes people don't. Sometimes people don't read the five print in their contracts. I advise you read your contract. If it's too wordy for you, maybe like you feel like, hey, you need a second opinion. Take it to a legal professional, someone that could actually look over this. Because a lot of times I've seen folks sign contracts and not realize like, again, yep. you, you, may be, you may be capped in terms of how much you get paid. So that could be a hindrance based off your living expenses. So that's something to pay attention to, to ask these certain questions prior to you signing the contract and starting your job. And, um, you know, obviously everybody's situation is different, but don't feel the fact that you asking your question uh, during these interviews that, that that could be a hindrance as to why you get hired. Um, if I Trust me. It, the, it could be a folks, bonus. It could be a bonus, yeah. But trust me, nine out of ten times the people that are hired you already have in mind the type of individual they're looking for and if you fit those qualifications. So that would just, um, obviously everybody's different, but for the most part, don't be afraid to ask those questions. Um, I'm only saying that from personal experience, obviously going on certain job interviews, feeling like, oh, maybe because like I really need this job, you know, maybe I want to ask like, you know, how much this is getting paid or whatever the case is. So Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, ask how much it's getting paid, ask about if there's a salary cap, that just, kind of shows that you're, it could also show that you're committed to growth and looking to not be in the role that you're in. So, you know, ask about the role that you could have in the future could, you know, work in your favor as well. But definitely, as Charles said, don't sign contracts and get surprised later down the road when you hit a ceiling that you didn't even know you signed years back. So Correct. don't get caught. So don't get caught. Exactly. And, and there's lots know, of just... legal... Charles, like, what what is the legal service that, uh, uh, rather, there's many affordable legal services, even on, like, Fiverr, you could probably get some legal help to look over a contract, so putting some resources out there for our listeners. Yeah, and, and again, you can, you can use third-party legal services. Don't think that you have to go to, like, these prestigious legal law firms. I mean, a lot of people look at uh, just uh, nine-to-five contracts as well, um, not just you know, uh, business contracts. So example, like a rocket lawyer, um, you know, uh, free promo, I guess, right. <laughs> Legal zoom, these folks, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it, these are, these are just some of, of many, um, that are out there, uh, biz council that could actually look at these contracts for you based on your nine to five job, not just your business. A lot of people may not know that. Um, but it's something just to kind of look at, check out, read your contract, don't sell yourself short right if you research and you feel like that's how much um you know you're worth or that's how much you should be worth it's okay to negotiate that um you know uh take a class negotiation class if you don't know how to 
or look on Google how to kind of negotiate. There's different ways to use certain words, certain terminology that cannot come off like you're demanding it more so, you know, just showing like, hey, this is what I know that I'm doing and this is what I know I'm worth. So that's just something to kind of put in place uh, for you guys. And if you need to spend a little money to get that job done well now of like negotiating and looking over your contract, it's better to invest it now because you probably be the difference of what could make if you do that now is significant, you know? So invest in yourself now to reap the rewards later down the line with what you could accomplish with a good negotiation. Correct. Yeah. So um, I also want to kind of transition into business owners, uh, business owners. If you're listening, uh, as we, you're actually watching this video when this is uploaded, um, if you're thinking of doing something like a salary cap, there are benefits. There are also disadvantages to it. Uh, some of the benefits is again, uh, the distribution of, of revenue is kind of, um, at a budget so you know exactly how much you're giving away um a lot of it uh obviously if you're on a cap you could only give a certain amount and that person has to agree to it also um a lot of times if you're on a salary cap it allows you to kind of have a better um understanding of your financials and reinvest into other parts of your business that could be your services that could be your marketing your branding um that could be just getting additional workers that can be a benefit as well um, and I think the most important thing is come tax time um, because it's easier to report a salary cap because usually the IRS kind of looks at it as an overall, not just individual. Because the reason why the IRS could look at an individual perspective is because obviously a lot of nine to five jobs, a lot of uh, self-employed jobs have uh, commission bonuses, all that that are in place. But with a salary cap, that's just the base uh, salary that they counted as. So they just look at the overall, not just the individual. So that's uh, advantages. Uh, Rami has some disadvantages uh, of a salary cap. Uh, well, I would say the obvious one of a salary cap is that there is a limit on how much you could stand to make. There is a top. There is a ceiling that you cannot pass. So, you know, it's almost... It could encourage, as I mentioned earlier, from the government standpoint, it could encourage people to seek employment elsewhere where they will not be capped, probably pay the same amount and have the future for growth. At the end of the day, you know, human nature is always to want more and <laughs> it's never enough. So eventually you're going to if you hit a salary cap, you're going to unless that's enough for you to live the rest of your life, you're going to want more. So. And it also could. You know, when your business starts to thrive or you know you're making a lot of money and you know that you can't make any more, it could also kind of start to create some tension in the workplace of like not getting your fair share. So that's what I see as some potential drawbacks. Yeah, um, I echo that um, again for business owners. If I would believe I would suggest if you're going to do it, just do it in the initial phase. If you if you start making a little bit of money. Um, it's going to get difficult, especially with your employees, because again, more people are going to feel like obviously they've been, they have equity in the company working for an amount of years, or they have these certain expertise. So salary caps could be a benefit, but as Rami mentioned, and I echo, there are advantages, but there are also disadvantages. So I think as a business owner, uh, it's something to kind of look at, but we kind of, I wanted to highlight that because every business needs employees. You need to do a business with other individuals that are are versed in different areas. So you can kind of focus as an overall, as a CEO founder. Um, so I think a salary cap can be a benefit in that regard. Um, but obviously, as we mentioned, there are disadvantages. So it's really up to you as an owner, CEO, um, just to kind of get a perspective as to how you can divvy out pay. But again, um, we're here to kind of give that information, um, you know, just to kind of share uh, with you guys. Again, this is uh, episode 35. Um, Rami, you want to have any last thoughts you want to add on there before I wrap it up? No, another, another informative session. You know, we definitely try to give the game out so that people can make informed decisions, um, and set themselves up for a more profit, uh, profitable and prosperous future. So definitely hope you learned something about this, whether you're negotiating a new contract or seeking employment, 
to take a look at where you stand to be capped, where you, where's your base salary, what incentives there are out there. And that will definitely help guide your decision. Um, and if you need any more, or if you want to ask us any questions, Charles, myself, we're always available through our pages, which Charles will tell you about right now, but thanks for listening. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for tuning in. This again, this is episode 35 of the Danso Pitch podcast. We are available on Instagram at the Danso Pitch. Twitter coming soon. We're exclusively on YouTube. If you're looking to promo your business, if you're looking to get any type of promotions, promoters, we're looking for you guys. We're looking for some sponsorships. Definitely subscribe, share with your significant other, friends, family, whoever you know, coworker. This is a Dance O Pitch podcast. Again, this is exclusively on YouTube for now. Keep a lookout. Uh, we have special guests coming for you guys. We have so much. I'm super excited. Let's get and it. Again, yeah, you know, we just wanted to kind of keep this episode informative for you guys. This is what we do. We bring the game to you guys. We're here to bring the information for you guys. So definitely check us out again. This episode will be dropping this coming weekend. Uh, love birds out there. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. You Valentine's guys enjoy. Day. You know, uh, definitely enjoy and keep a lookout for our episode next week. Hopefully we can get everybody into one space uh, by next week. So oh, yeah. Stay tuned for, for when you see us all together again. Oh, man. These episodes are going to become even greater. Exactly. Thank you, guys. Take care.